Why do people build? For shelter, perhaps? Or to honor the gods? But sometimes, buildings make a statement of power, prestige, and place in the world. The great altar at Pergamon is one such example of a building to increase one's power. The foundations of the altar were laid on the Pergamene Acropolis circa 170 BC and were part of a building program of King Eumenes II to beautify the city and to compete with other Hellenistic monarchies. Pergamon had flourished under the suzerainty of the Seleucids, but after victory against the barbarian Galicians in 241 BC, Attalus I saw his chance and declared independence. He saw himself as the protector of the Ionian Greeks against the barbarians. Although Pergamon was now independent, it wasn't until Autolus's successor, Eumenes, that the altar was built. By this point, Pergamon had joined in the Macedonian Wars on the side of Rome and gained territory in both Agano and Euboea. He had also made gains from the rest of Seleucid Asia Minor, establishing himself as an impressive Hellenistic power. Competing with other Hellenistic powers required not just military might, but marble. Building programs allowed the elites to compete against each other without blood being spilt. The altar is built on a large scale, so large that it's actually hard to tell which temple it is meant to serve. It is of the Ionic order, reinforcing the view that Pergamon was the protector of the Ionian people. The altar contains two continuous friezes, the outer one depicting a gigantomachy, a classic motif of civilization crushing barbarism, and the other the story of Telephos, from who the Attalids claimed descent. Since Hellenistic monarchs were often linked to a cult, it helped to have a divine ancestor, in this case one that was associated with Asia Minor. In addition, Akrotaria on the roof depict the gods Athena, the city's patron, and Poseidon, a symbol of the sea, showing the Pergonines' ability at sea. Since antiquity, the altar has continued to function as an imposing object that helps to establish a new nation's power. Brought to Germany in 1886, it was seen as a symbol of the power of Wilhelmine Germany. It was also the basis for parts of the Nazi Party parade grounds in Nuremberg. Albert Speer took inspiration of its original message of building a dynasty and the imposing nature of the original structure.